All right, we have got the full trailer here for Total War Saga Troy Mythos DLC, and it is pretty sweet. There is a lot to go over here today. We have got um, two FAQs to kind of just quickly touch into and this sweet trailer, but in my typical fashion of just upfronting the knowledge so you don't have to sit through this entire video, let me give you the down and dirty of what's going on. So of course, we're gonna go through a trailer. We're gonna talk about that trailer, some of the cool things within it. But Troy will be coming to Steam on September 2nd, and with it, a new Mythos DLC. That Mythos DLC will also be accessible to your Epic Store if you want to just simply play it on that rather than uh, rebuying it through Steam. That's kind of a, a big caveat and something I'll talk about later is that you will have to rebuy Troy or buy it for the first time, I suppose, if you want to play it on Steam. So keep that in mind. But what Mythos does is it adds an entire mythological subset to the game. So rather than playing the truth behind the myth, which is a mode you can still play as, you can play fully mythological, meaning that all of the monsters no longer are, like the Minotaur is not a guy on stilts, it's an actual sweet looking Minotaur. Or hey, the Griffin, or they've added Griffins into the game, but the Centaurs are no longer dudes with sheepskin, they're actual Centaurs. So you've got that new mythological uh, game mode added in. Conversely, you now get a historical mode, which adds just purely historical units. There's no mythology whatsoever. So you now will have three types of games. You'll have purely historical, truth behind the myth, and mythological. And the historical is a FLC that is coming alongside the Mythos DLC. So that'll be really cool to jump into. But that's really the down and dirty of this all. That's the kind of what's coming out right now is this big mythological DLC. So that's all you wanted to know. That's all you need to know. Uh, you can go ahead and shut this video down. But before you do, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I cannot tell you how much that helps out any content creator you do watch. But what we're going to do here today is go through this trailer. Then we're going to talk about the FAQ that gives us more details about the mythological side of the thing, side of things. And the mythology side of things looks really great. I'm really excited to dive into it come uh, the next couple of weeks as we get uh, the marketing embargoes that lift and allow us to show you guys gameplay. And that is, again, a, a good upfront uh, disclaimer. They have sent me the game. I obviously cannot talk about stuff unless it is publicly released or there is a marketing embargo that has lifted. So I am limited in what I can discuss with you guys. But let's take a look at this trailer and talk about some of the fun stuff within and then go through the FAQs. We're gonna start here and I'm just gonna press play. I'm gonna actually turn the volume down a little bit here. They've sent me this ahead of time too so I can kind of show it to you guys. But we'll, we'll pause and play this as necessary. And to start off with, it's gonna be going through the initial uh, teasers that we already saw, kind of put together as one whole thing. And I'm gonna put a link to everything in the description as I always do. And this kind of just shows us, hey, what we saw before, the Griffin, the Hydra, and the um, Cerberus, the, the, the uh, three-headed dog that guards Hades. And dude, look at that Hydra though, man. The Hydra is entirely different looking than the Total War, War Total War Warhammer Hydra. So a really cool different take on things here. And I'm really excited to see all this flesh out because we also get uh, this trailer talks about some of the things about how to unlock these monsters, right? You have to undergo these uh, trials and the FAQ tells us a little bit more about that. But let this kind of go through. We'll see more and more of it and we'll jump back just a little bit here and there. Talk about some things. Man. I mean, and this is really exciting for me because I th I didn't think Troy was going to be as great as it was, or at least as fun as it was. And I always said, like, I'd rather just see a full-on mythology side of this game. And this looks to be what we're getting, obviously, um, is that full-on mythology side. So let's jump back just a little bit here. So we see each one of the monsters, right? We see uh, the Hydra. And look at those sweet eyes. We see Cerberus here looking... Just weird with a with really big mouth. Uh, then we go forward here and we get Poseidon looking kind of gnarly. Did we get, did I, did I already miss the griffin? No, it's further forward. But in addition to, we see some other stuff that's, oh, there it is. We see the centaurs that are gonna be coming with the FLC portion of the DLC. They're gonna be changing up the way, maybe that is part of the DLC. I don't know, we have to look at the, the FAQ. Um, we get some other kind of themed units along with each and every monster, which is quite cool here on the sides, as you can see. And 
I'm really personally like you can see these like Cyclopean warrior dudes um, along with the Griffin up top here. So I'm really excited to really put this through its paces and show it off to you guys. In my personal opinion, when I take a look at a lot of stuff from Total War uh, Saga Troy originally, I thought this is this is a huge test bed for three. And I think that really is going to be telling when we play through a lot of the mythol mythological portions of this game um, and kind of connecting the dots of what mechanics could be weighed into game three because this is the same engine that essentially would be powering game three. So we've taken a look at the trailer. We've looked at some fun stuff. Let's now look at these uh, FAQs and talk a little bit more about them. Okay, so moving into the FAQ here, we can talk a little bit more about the actual DLC itself. And I misspoke a second ago. The redoing of, say, the Harpies, the Centaur, the Cyclops, and all, that is part of the DLC, not the FLC, because the mythological version of the mythological game mode is part of the DLC. So I apologize for that uh, misstep there. But essentially, we have the game broken up into its three parts the Hydra, the Griffin Patriarch, and the Mighty Cerberus. And each one of these um, mythological creatures has an accompanying amount of followers, special abilities, and new gameplay opportunities. In addition to, uh, Mythos includes new units and concepts previously depicted with their real-world equivalents, such as the Harpies, Centaurs, the Cyclops, and more, have been reimagined as their mythical counterparts. The Divine Will system is expanded, allowing you to take control of the Thunderbolts of Zeus himself or the Epic Tides of Poseidon, very much like we saw in that trailer. And again, here's the in-game version of the Hydra. And look at that thing. So, you know, right in Total War Warhammer 2's Hydra, it's walking on all fours. It's got all of its heads. Look at this guy. Definitely a lot <laughs> bigger, bigger, beefier, and chunkier. Just a real chungus. Like, that thing is disgusting. And a lot more uh, serpentine versus the Warhammer Hydra has got a lot more, like, draconic traits. So a bit, very different look. Perhaps something for Koresh? Who knows? But whoa, whoa, whoa. So isn't this isn't a historical game anymore. So what they're saying here is that there will be three game modes. There will be a historical mode, a mythological mode, and then the truth behind the myth mode. Truth behind the myth mode being the one that we uh, that is default to Troy, what we've already played. Mythos being the new one. And then obviously historical being a new one that's added as an FLC. And this will launch September 2nd on a Thursday. And here's kind of a, a, a juicy one is it will cost $25. So that is a chunky DLC. But I, I guess you can make the argument here. As far as DLCs go, it's not just simply, hey, here's some new units. It completely changes the face of the game. Um, from what I've, I've played and tested, there's a lot to go into with that statement. So we have to wait until I can actually go through it next week. So we'll talk about that next week as far as what that $25 includes. But I will be upfront and, and, and be outright and say that's a really hefty price tag to tell people to pay. And I think that a lot of people got it for free. So on the Epic Store at least. So I think that's why the price tag might be... Uh, a little bit more palatable if you got it on Epic. If you're coming to this from Steam for the first time, that might be a little bit harder of a uh, pill to swallow. And we're going to go into the uh, Steam pricing in just a little bit because they've got a bunch of different uh, packages, I guess you could say. So we'll talk about uh, we'll talk about that towards the end of the video. So with the gameplay though, the trailer talks about this. I had spoken over the trailer talking about it, but it goes into how uh, you have to do certain activities right activities yeah you have to build a house out of popsicle sticks no you have to do certain quests so the three mythical monsters that will be available in troy mythos are the lyrnian hydra the griffin patriarch and the cerberus each has their own set of associated units buildings in battle and on map special abilities and other bits and pieces depending on which you recruit this is a task in and of itself each beast requires a great quest on your part, dispatching a hero and his troops to find evidence of, track down, and eventually fight and recruit the great beast. This is a mythic expedition, and only one can be attempted per campaign, so choose wisely. As part of this mythic expedition, your troops will face five dilemmas you will need to resolve, preparing your army for the final confrontation. When you eventually track down and begin the final phase of that hunt, a mighty battle will take place with you taking control of the monster if you win. The cost is that this whoa, the cost is that this army is otherwise occupied for its entire journey and will not be able to help in the defense of your lands on your conquests. 
when you can afford to do so is up to you. Once you have finished the Mythic Expedition, your monsters of choice will act as an agent on the map, capable of carrying out various special actions, as well as joining armies to fight as powerful units. Your campaign antagonist will also be able to obtain their own Mythic monster, and they will do so before you if you believe it too long. If if you leave it for too long, make your choices wisely. So what I like about Mythos is this isn't changing the way the game plays. You still have your end game goal, but it adds a whole entire kind of really solid side quest, as it were, that if you don't complete, your opponent can complete and actually become way stronger than you. So and the, ne the, the nemesis system, the antagonist system in the game is going to be prevalent as well with Mythos to see how that all kind of shakes up will be exciting. And like I said, you know, mythological will also kind of pull into how the gods interact with you. you when you actually use their abilities, you'll see them on the, uh, the battleground. So we've updated battle maps in the campaign map to bring the gods of ancient Greece closer. Quite literally, their faces will now appear in the skies above your engagements, which is really sick, right? You, you have this heavy mythological stance. I mean, look at the Cyclops here. Um, a lot more of a realistic looking Cyclops and less so, less so of a caricature looking Cyclops as far as the game stance goes. So I'm really excited to see how some of these models look, how they'll, their animations are, what their what their overall kind of feel is. Come to or come total War Hammer three, come Troy uh, Mythos's launch to just kind of get an idea of how these guys are really going to play into the campaign and how the the gods of ancient Greece will really kind of change the feel of the battleground. And one thing I've really liked about Troy that I also liked about Three Kingdoms is how optimized both games were. So what this will tell me is if we're having these bigger, larger than lifestyle battles with huge mythological beasts and destructive capabilities of the ancient gods, and if it's all very well optimized, that bodes well for Total War Warhammer 3, in my opinion, because we never, we, none of the content creators were able to play Warhammer 3 on their own rigs. We were all playing um, remotely. So this, to me, is always going to be a test bed for Warhammer 3, and I hope it comes out as optimized as Troy Saga Original and uh, Three Kingdoms did, because I want Th Warhammer 3 to be on that same level of um, uh, efficiency. So what's included in the free update alongside Troy? So basically the historical mode will change everything too. They're removing all mythological style of units. It's all just units granted in quote unquote history. Remember, this is around the time prior to the Bronze Age collapse, so you've got a lot of stuff to pull from. But then you also added this new administration system, and this has... Um, a pretty interesting effect, and it's actually in all three modes, but this involves a new pooled resource administration burden. Each hero, unit, and settlement has a defined amount of administration burden. Units have different amounts based on their tier. Stronger unit is, the more administration burden cost. Essentially what this does is, this administration burden, the more units you have, the larger your empire, the more penalties. Kind of think of it as supply lines giving you an overall percentage reduction to your income. This will start to affect things slowly. So the cost of recruitment and upkeep go higher and are broken down by resource. Food costs are the first to go up, followed by bronze and gold. We didn't want it to purely feel bad that you were growing your armies, hence the benefits to royal decrees and influence from being a big, large, powerful empire. So basically what this system is geared to do is to make it viable to play as an individual with smaller armies that you don't want to have these massive, huge 20 stacks rolling around your, your battlefield. You don't feel penalized for it because you get a lot of administrative bonuses, quote unquote, by not being penalized with your, um, uh, what's it called, your resources, versus being a larger army with larger, or I'm sorry, a larger empire with larger armies spread across the map. You do have penalties to your resources, but as a result, royal decrees and influence you get bonus towards. So it's kind of trying to strike a fine line, and I'm sure that there's going to be some issues when this first comes out, but it'll be interesting to see how this kind of plays out because this might replace that just not so great um, 
uh, a supply lines penalty that we see in Total War Warhammer 2 that a lot of people haven't really liked. So this seems to be their way of kind of trying to balance that. So this is a little bit of uh, info on the FLC, and we don't know much about the historical mode just yet. We'll be getting its it will be getting its own blog post to talk a lot more about it. But let's quickly jump now to the different versions of Steam to close our video out. So here's our breakdown for the three types of additions that you can get for Total War Saga Troy on Steam. And the base game is $50. It's not a $60 game. It is a, it is a Saga, so it is a reduced price somewhat. And then the Mythic Edition is going to include the base game and Mythos at a 30% discount. And then the Heroic Edition includes all the DLCs that came out on Epic Store plus Mythos and the base game. So how does this break out from a monetary perspective? Since I only know USD, I will be giving this to you in USD. So if you purchase the game, um, if you pre-order it, and that pre-order lasts, well, that pre-order price more or less at lasts until September 30th. So even if you wait for the game to come out, you want to hear some reviews, see some gameplay before you make the decision, you've got until September 30th to take advantage of these quote-unquote pre-order deals. But the standard edition would cost you $37 versus $50. The Mythic Edition which would cost normally 75 in total, would cost you 52. And then the Heroic Edition, which would cost you 95, would cost you 57. So in all honesty, and this is without tax, obviously, so you'd probably want to round up to 55 and to probably an even 60. So I'd say 50, I'm sorry, to probably 40, 55, and $60 respectively, depending on your tax and so on and so forth. Or does DLC get taxed? I can't even remember anymore. It changes like every damn day. But um, that's not terrible. It's just a pretty hefty price tag for anyone who is coming over that had it on Epic. If you did not have it on Epic, that's actually pretty sweet. I, I mean, buying the Mythic Edition where you get the pre the uh, the game and the DLC for fifty two bucks, fifty five bucks, whatever it is after tax, that's not too bad. I, I'm I'm on I'm on board with that. But Again, I think if you if you had everything already on Epic, it'd be really awesome if there was a way to cross-reference that. Like, hey, link your Epic game store with your Total War access. Okay, we verified you own it. Here's a tw an additional 25% off coupon that you can take advantage of, making the game 50% off. Something like that. Where Okay, yeah, it eats our margin on Steam, but it's a little bit more fair to you guys, the players. Um I think I would have liked that approach a little bit more. I mean, yeah, these are pretty substantial uh, discounts, but... Like I said, if you've already been playing it for a year on Epic Edition, make sure that you're really stoked on the DLC before you jump to Steam. Otherwise, you can just purchase it on Epic at $25 and just keep it on Epic if, you, if you're okay with that. Um, I just feel like being talking about this and being transparent about the price point is pretty crucial because this is going to be the biggest thing that I think that a lot of people have as hangups as a barrier entry to get into Troy, whether or not they want to, you know, right? Is, is going to be this price point and whether or not they stay on Epic, if they've got qualms with Epic, or if they jump to Steam and what that price point's going to be, um, what have you. So if you have not yet picked up the game, I think jumping on the Steam version and taking advantage of these discounts is pretty substantial. And you, I think you really have to see what's coming in this DLC to really make the decision whether or not it's going to be for you. I, I honestly, I think that there's a ton to go through in the DLC and I'm very excited to show it off next week. But again, just want to be transparent about that. Uh, of course, none of these additions will include the Blood and Glory DLC. And that is a uh, requirement because of the rating that they've given the game. You will have to spend $3 for that DLC, uh, the Blood and Glory DLC regardless. So just wanted to go over that real quick here. Um, the multiplayer will exist and it will be cross-platform between Epic and Steam, which is quite nice. Um, there's no differences between the two versions as well. Um, and you cannot pre-order it on Steam. As the original release of Total War Saga Troy is already available for purchase elsewhere, Valve chose not to list the game for pre-order on its Steam storefront. This doesn't affect your ability to pre-order a Steam version of the game, however. Pre-order from our, our, our store and the game will appear in your Steam library after purchase. So you will have that capability. I am not sure if Nexus is going to allow me to do the pre-order because of that stipulation down there. So um, I'm, I might be offering 
covering it on my Nexus store. I hope I will be able to, in which case I'll put a link in the description and in uh, the pinned comment as always, guys. But go ahead and let me know in the comment section if you are excited about uh, the mythological version of Troy. If you aren't so excited, if you're more excited about its possibility for Total War Warhammer 3, whatever it could possibly be, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Thank you for dealing with these allergies as they just finally start to clear up. But as always, have a good one and take care.